Come forward here. And uh, so this is, uh, this is a great moment uh, because, as you know, we we're looking for a new music director. Anina, you're going to join us here on the uh, front seat. And uh, this is going to be a commissioning, and we've been talking about this for a little bit. And Elder Kathy Clark is going to introduce the process about how we got here. And I'm going to have a bit of a conversation with, with Nina so you can get to know a bit more about her. Well, aren't we all together just delighted with this happy occasion this morning? Welcome, Nina. Uh, as you know, it's been actually a number of months since we've been looking for a director of music. And after Jen, I uh, made a decision to uh, take a, a step back from that role. The elders actually met as a session. We looked at what the music director might be doing differently in the future. There was a new job description that was developed and posted. And incredibly, we had 13 applicants. I mean, I just, I just thought that was absolutely incredible. And so from that, we had a, a small team from our HR committee that did the screening and the interviewing. and. And, uh, and delighted with our new music director, Nina. And many, many of you know Nina because she's been part of our church family for a number of years. And many of you also know Nina's husband, John, who often you would find at the back at the, at the soundboard. You may not know if you're not part of a vine group that Nina and John also are leaders of one of the vine groups. So really a, an influential family in, within our, our congregation. When the team was doing the interviews, I think one of the things that struck them the most is that one of the very first things Nina said is that she has a passion for music, but that's a passion that is only second to her passion for the Lord. So just a beautiful combination of, of giftedness and joy that you bring as a result of those two passions. Uh, I think many of you know, and certainly many of our, our expanding choir back here also know, Nina just has years and years and years of musical uh, skill and training and giftedness. Nina has a degree, a Bachelor of Music degree in piano performance. She has some other certificates and diplomas in music performance. And I mean, I, I, I'm struggling to believe this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it as the truth. Apparently, because I mean, you must have started this when you were like three or four, but apparently Nina has been teaching music to children and adults, adults even over 80, so there's, there's hope for me on the piano still, um, but for more than 50 years, which I just think is phenomenal. And after all these many, many decades of uh, using her gifts, Nina actually was the accompanist in the King Edward Choir when I sang with the choir. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many, many years of giftedness, you are now sharing your love for the Lord, your passion for music together to the glory of God and to the great benefit of, of our church family. So thank you for all of that. Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate that introduction. Go to, don't go too far. Um, yeah, so just, just this is an opportunity, Nina, for people to get to know you a bit more. So I have two questions for you. And uh, yeah, just first tell us a bit about how you first became a Christian. I think my story is similar to many that are here probably mm -hmm. and it relates to the parable of the sower and the seeds mm -hmm. there were many seeds planted over many years the first time i remember being in church was at saint giles anglican church mm -hmm. just a few blocks away how many know saint giles church mm -hmm. and i was just a toddler and i vividly remember the flannel graph God bless Sunday school teachers, you planted a seed. I don't think we went very many times to church, but then grade eight came along in public school and a new girl moved in, Janice Curry. She invited me to her church and they had a wonderful library. God bless all librarians and church <laughs> libraries, and I took out a Danny Orlis book. And I don't think I ever returned it. <laughs> <laughs> but it had a huge impact. We looked that up, life. you owe 200 dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been 1969. Another seed was planted. Then off into high school days, life got tumultuous at times, and my best friend was Martha Klein, the daughter of the Lutheran Church 
minister just down the street that used to be there. And one Friday night, I went pounding at their door. It was really late. It felt mm -hmm. like midnight, but it's probably 10 or 11. <laughs> I was 14. And God bless her parents who allowed her to come out and walk with me because I was in such a state of distress. They allowed her to go out into the darkness of Barrie and on Codrington Street, right near the hundred steps, she told me how it is that you become a Christian. Mm -hmm. She said, you just have to ask the Lord to come in. Repent of your sins and come in. So I can be a rather dramatic person, so I fell on my knees and I said, Lord Jesus, come in. Yeah. And she said, Nina, that's blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it properly. <laughs> So she instructed me, and I went to their church yeah, for a time, yeah. Yeah. and stumbled mm -hmm. along in my teenage years. I was a church organist at mm -hmm. the Anglican church mm -hmm. beside the pastor's house, rode my bike out there and played the organ. And then university days came. Well, first I started at University of Toronto, and I got extremely ill. Mm -hmm. It took me two years to recover. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, where is God in all of this? And the doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. It was some kind of a virus. So they said the only thing they could think of would be to get out of Toronto and go someplace with the cleaner, cleaner air. So I went to Western University after two years of recovery. And there I was invited to a Baptist church. So off I went. And I was baptized at that time, mm -hmm. but still searching. So it was in my second year of university that I stumbled across a little group of engineers who had just started their Bible study. They had been led of the Lord to start yeah, it. Okay. And there were about, I think, six men, young men, around the table. And I said to my friend, Schultze, you want to come to a Bible study? She said, sure, Nina, if you're there, it's bound to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> she was not a Christian, so off we went to the Bible yeah. study. And those guys, they had a very interesting time with the Bible, but then they pulled out a notebook with prayer requests in it, and they were expecting answers. Mm. So I knew about going to church, I knew about reading your Bible, and I knew about praying, but whoever expected it to get answered? Mm. So that was mm. the final tipping point. Yeah. So all those seeds that were planted came to fruition without the first few people maybe ever knowing about it, although I have yeah. been in touch with some of them. Wow. So I am, I've been changed from a weed to a flower. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's helpful, and I think what you say a lot of us can relate to because we've had experiences where people have done things in our lives and there's been processes, and you might not see all the pieces come together, but you do because you've been able to look back and see the contributions of that. So thank you for that, Nina. Um, obviously, music is a focus. So what, is the role, what do you see as the role of music in worship? I have to put my glasses on for this one. <laughs> <laughs> the foundation of Luther's beliefs was that music is the most natural form of worship because it can carry words as a form of praise. Mm. The longest book in the Bible is a book of songs, the book of Psalms, mm -hmm. which I believe we're going yeah. to be studying. Yeah, next. And the first reference to musician is in Genesis 4. Jubal mm -hmm. was recorded as the father of all those that play the lyre and the pipes. So music should convey a sense of awe and wonder in the presence of God. Music should be made primarily to the Lord and then to each other. It should lead our thoughts toward God and it reaches out and expresses what words cannot mm -hmm. say. Right. If you think of, of a mother with her baby, she's not necessarily using words. She is humming and holding that baby close and the baby knows of her love and it's through mm. that music. <laughs> Psalm 96.1 says, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. So again, our direction is to the Lord. It's to him 
and about him that we sing. Singing has a unique way of bringing your heart, mind, soul, and strength together to focus on God. And it allows us to express our love to him. Yeah. And it, music can deeply affect our mental state and raise our mood. Has anyone ever experienced that? Yeah, yeah. Oh dear, only 10 or 15 people? <laughs> Come on, there's more of you than that. Singing to God helps us to keep God first when we're in the midst of chaos and tragedy, which happens to Christians. When my mother was ill for two and a half years, we were caring for her, and that mm -hmm. 